dispel this. Andrew, we don't want these tactics in the campaign. Do not use surrogates in my community to excite into religious tensions falsely. If you, Andrew Cuomo, feel that this man, Carl Palladino, is an anti-Semite, then Andrew, come out of the closet and say so, and let's explore it. Stop sending the Dove Hikens and the George Weinbergers and the David Niedermans to say these things. It's disgraceful, it's offensive to our community. And I want to say that a new era has dawned. Because I'm saying here today that when these liberal hacks to get a few shekels or breadcrumbs from the table of the deviance lobby. When they are going to make press conferences, ostensibly speaking in the name of the Orthodox Jewish community while spitting on our values, I asked them, when was the last time they made a press conference when Sheldon Silver pushed partial birth abortion, baby killing, or homosexual marriage? I didn't see them at a press conference. I'm telling you, we are going to go down there, and I'm not going to be polite next time. Next time, we will interrupt their press conference wherever it is, because this is too important, the future of our children. And our values, it's too important to be left to the left-leaning losers of the Orthodox community who are selling our heritage and our godly values for a bunch of lentils, shekels, and pottage. No more. We don't want it. Carl Palladino is the, is the arising of a new era. That's why we're embracing him. That's why, that's why New York State, far beyond the context of the Orthodox Jews, I promise Mr. Palladino, if he sticks to this return to religious and civil values of decency, if he understands and educates and informs the community that we are not merely opposed to the deviance for spiritual reasons, though that's far than more enough, <laughs> we're opposed because we don't want to become constituted as legal bigots and racists, lose our tax deductions, be forced to embrace any deviance that the politically correct crowd decides to throw at us. So without further ado, I want to present to you the next governor of the state of New York, Mr. Carl Palladino. Well, I have an announcement to make. Michael, you're fired. <laughs> I've hired, hired a new campaign spokesman. All right. I have to ask my wife. <laughs> it's a she. <laughs> it's so nice of you to have me here. Thank you. My name is Carl Palladino, and I'm from Buffalo, New York. I'm running for governor. I don't like using the word running. I'm looking to serve you for four years. I'm looking to serve the people of the state of New York, and that means all the people. I went to St. Bonaventure University, Syracuse University College of Law. I served the United States Army for about 11 years total, active in reserve, and retired as a captain. I have four children, four grandchildren, one wife, <laughs> a dog named Duke, is my friend. I spent the last 38 years of my life uh, uh, practicing law for the first 15 and slowly evolving into the real estate development business. <coughs> Today, <coughs> we have a business that, that uh, manages, leases, and develops approximately uh, half a billion dollars worth of real estate that we've assembled over that period of time. The, the, uh, our, we employ about 450 people. I'm not a politically correct person. I'm unintimidatable. My wife went and looked that up in the dictionary. She said, it's not a word. <laughs> and I said, but I like it so much, I'm going to just keep using it. Uh, 
Can you repeat that? I said the, I, I'm not, uh, excuse me, I'm unintimidatable. Oh, okay. And my wife went and looked it up in the dictionary and said it's not a word. Um, I decided to run for governor after I had watched Mario rise to the top on the excuse me, Andrew Rice to the top on the Democrat again, and after I had met Mr. Lazio. Those events, together with a, I guess, a experience where I learned about a lot about mortality, I learned about the fragility of life, and, and, and I knew that life is just a sprint. Combined with some urging by some friends, who knew that my unique character could do the job. I was never disposed to be in an uh, elected office. This is the first and the last time that I'm going to run for elected office. I'm only going to serve four years. I'm going to go to Albany, and I'm going to restructure the government. I'm going to lower spending by 20% in the first year. Going to lower the taxes by 10 percent in the first year. I didn't say cut. I didn't say put a cap percentage on an increase like Andrew was saying. Andrew's saying he's going to gradually increase spending, gradually inc increase uh, taxes. I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut out agencies. I'm going to cut out a lot of political jobs and positions that have grown over the years that have resulted in a government of 298,341 people. A government that that our legislature and governor over the last couple of years couldn't find one employee to lay off. Nevertheless, they raised our taxes and fees $15 billion during that a government that gives us the most liberal social welfare and Medicaid benefits anywhere in America, and for that matter in the world, and therefore invites, because of the right to travel under the 14th Amendment, invites every lame and disenfranchised person in America to come to New York and hop on the backs of our taxpayers. A government that has illustrated in its actions on on, on moral, ethical, and, and legal grounds, an in, inability to properly police itself, crime, corruption, pay to play club, friends and family club, all that nonsense is going to go, it's going to disappear. We're going to restore hearts of people, a grounded government that they can turn to and rest assured that they know where, they go, where they're going in the future. Right now, people look at Washington, they look at Albany, and there's nothing grounded. It's chaos everywhere. They're talking, they're, they're talking directly in opposition to everything we learned. You see, I'm from the same place that you are. My dad taught me family values. He taught me how you take care of your family. Take care of your old, the old when they get old. And there's no greater counsel than, than, than your grandparent can give to the grandchild. You know, we, we pain and we struggle to raise our children. We take them and we, we lead them down that path into life. We advise them. We cajole them to go to school to, and to better themselves, and then what happened? Then that, that pain. We love them so much that we, we got to tell them to go away to find a fulfilling job. 